Hello everyone. This video is an extension of lab 11 where we had implemented FFT on FPGA or PL part of Zinc SOC and compared its output to the software or PS implementation of the FFT. Okay. And in this lab, we will compare the performance of software implementation and hardware implementation of the FFT. Okay, and the performance is computed in terms of execution time. So we will see how much uh, time it takes uh, for PS implementation to execute and how much time it takes for PL implementation to execute. And to measure the execution time, we will make use of global timers. That is, they, they are, the global timers are already present in the Zinc PS. So we will use those global timers to uh, compute execution time. Okay, and to use the global timers, to, we need to include this x time underscore l dot h file. Okay, so if we see that uh, this header file, it has only two uh, functions, uh, x time underscore set time and x time underscore get time. So uh, the set time, what it does, so if we have to set the value of the global timer, we, may, we can use the set time function. And if we need to get the value of the global timer at a particular instant, so we will uh, use the get time function. And in our uh, case, we will only be needing this uh, get time function. So what we are going to do, we are going to get the time before the execution, software or hardware, and then we are going to uh, get the time after the execution has completed. So uh, the difference between these two will give us the execution time. Okay, <clears throat> and we can see that uh, this x time get time function. It uh, we need to pass the uh, some pointer here, and the pointer has to be of type x time. Now this x time uh, is already uh, user defined data time that's already defined here. We can see okay here. So this is an unsigned sixty four bit integer. So this will store uh, the initial value and the final value of our time. So we uh, don't need to worry about like uh, if it even if it takes a lot, lot of time, uh, the 64 bits are able to um, get there. So we won't be having the problem of the overflow in here. Okay, so uh, what we are going to do the next thing after including x uh, time dot here, uh, underscore l dot h header file in the main function, the first we are uh, going to declare these uh, variables, uh, which will store the initial and the final uh, this counts here time. Okay, so we will have this uh, t processor start uh, and t processor end. And they will be of the time x time. So before the execution of the uh, PS implementation, uh, we will uh, store our uh, time count this global timer value in this uh, t processor start. And when this uh, the uh, software execution is completed, we will store it in t processor end. And difference between the two will give me the how much time uh, or the how many counts actually had occurred between these two okay and same for the fpl part or the fpga part we will get the time before the execution and after the execution now uh, here we can start that for the ps part so this is my our, uh, function where we uh, get this uh, the pla ps implementation of the software implementation so before we call the function we get the time and after we uh, call the after the execution has completed, we again uh, uh, store these uh, the timer value in this position at the T processor and pointer. Okay, and same goes with PL part. Now we see this is from where the PL execution starts. So we start the timer, or we get the timer value just before we started the our. DMA transfer. So our PL, PL implementation starts from where we uh, get start this uh, DMA transfer from uh, the memory to the PL part. And after we have received all the uh, like all the uh, calculated FFT values, we will stop this timer. So we can see that after all this has completed, we have seen the DMA is idle. So we have received all the DMA values. So we stop this timer. Not to stop this timer, we get this uh, the uh, final count. So again, the this uh, end minus this FPGA start will give us how many uh, total uh, counts are there, or how uh, yeah, how many total counts are there, uh, how many counts have been uh, uh, passed before from the start of execution to the end of execution, and uh, the difference between these two will give us total time. 
not total time actually it will give us that how many uh, counts have been there so because it's a counter so it will count from one two three and how many total uh, counts were uh, told there so it will give us the difference between these two and then we will just divide it by counts per second now the counts per second is again this is a constant which is declared in this x time underscore l dot h uh, file and we can see that it works as at uh, half the clock frequency. So it will uh, work at half the clock frequency. And by dividing these counts per second or uh, total counts, uh, uh, we can uh, we will get the, our total time period in total time in seconds. But uh, getting the total time in seconds uh, is like uh, we don't usually we don't have these like. Uh, execution time won't be in seconds. It will be in like microseconds or at max milliseconds. So this second uh, to convert this time from seconds to microseconds, we multiply it by ten raised power six. Okay. And uh, uh, because we know this uh, processor T processor and T processor star are counts per second, these are unsigned 64 bit integers. And to convert it into the floating point value, so we are using this 0 0.0. So we are multiplying it by uh, 10 is power 6.0. So we will get the uh, type process in the float. So it will be finally in the floating point value. And same goes for the, uh, for the PL part. We will get this uh, PL time for. Yeah. And to get the acceleration factor, we will simply divide uh, the time it takes for processor and uh, divide by time it took for uh, FPG or the PL execution. And we will get our acceleration factor. Okay. Now, uh, one more thing that we need to see here is that uh, uh, when we actually start this timer or when we get the initial time and uh, this final time, in, uh, in between these, there should not be any other statements, like for example, the uh, printf statements, okay? Uh, uh, if we use this printf statement, the printf statement, it takes a lot of uh, uh, time uh, to execute, okay? And this execution time will add to the uh, total time that we will be calcul computing or calculating. Okay, and uh, but uh, this is not the FFT uh, execution time. Okay, so this is not actually the FFT execution time. But uh, if we um, use it in before these two, um, in between uh, getting these two, so we will uh, add this time, and it won't give us a correct result. So make sure that there are no zero primitive statements or any other statement uh, in between these two, other than what uh, the DMA transfer and uh, reception requires. Okay, and uh, this thing like a zero print of this is there, but it will only be executed if uh, we, we are getting some failure. Okay, if, uh, if the DMA transfer is not successful, only then we will be getting. So if that uh, DMA transfer is not successful, we will anyway not be needing the execution time because our program working correctly. So uh, this won't be executed. Uh, and so it's okay to uh, be there, but yeah. So uh, this there should not be any uh, the zero print of statements that will be executed if the correct for the correct execution. Okay, so uh, this thing needs to be taken care of. So let's uh, get let's see how much acceleration factor we will get. And this is the same uh, for the eight bit uh, eight point f fifty that we had already uh, used in that uh, lab eleven. Okay, so let's uh, use it. So this uh, the this uh, these steps are same that we have been doing. So I hope you all are aware of these steps. So we will just see the JTAG terminal run the program. And okay, we can, here we can see that our PS and PL output, they are uh, same. So FFT has run successfully and the PS and PL implementation are same, they are correct. And then we see the time for PS. So software implementation took 4.56 microseconds and the uh, hardware implementation or the PL implementation took 8.15 seconds. So in case of 8.FFT, we see that uh, software performs better than the uh, hardware. And so the acceleration factor is 0 0.559. Okay, now, uh, in this, so we can say in this case, the software performs better. So what will happen if we actually go for uh, like a higher point FFT? Okay, this was for uh, eight point FFT. So let's now move to uh, 64 point 
F50 and see that it would also will be there like the hard, hardware will be so the PS performance will be better. So let's see. So this is the code for the hard, uh, the 64 point F50. Uh, I have also already like um, uh, generated this. Uh, there I have already generated that uh, hardware part of it. So I'm I will only run it because we already have done that in the lab 11 so here i'm only showing you the ps part here okay so let's run it so it had it has completed its execution so we can see it's 64.f50 and it's correct, it's FFT ran successfully. And for the time comparison, we see the time for PS is 44 microseconds and for PL it is 13 microseconds. So as we move from uh, the 8-point FFT to 64-point FFT, we see that uh, the acceleration factor has actually gone up by three. So it was 0 0.5 before, but now, uh, now the PL actually hardware implementation is much faster than software implementation. Okay, so now, uh, if we go move further to like 256 or 1024.50, we will again see the same thing. So let's see one more example. Like if we go to 256.50, uh, will the trend follow or not? So let's see. Let's go to So it's two, it's for 256.50 and we see the acceleration factor has increased to seven. Now it was 0 0.5 for 8.50, three for uh, 64.50 and for 256 it is seven. And if we will go to like more higher than like 1024.50, we will see that this acceleration factor will increase further. So let's only, let's go for this last one. So we'll go for this 1024.50 and we will see that acceleration factor will actually increase uh, more than seven. So let's see. Now we can see that the acceleration factor has increased to 11.3. So from this lab, we will see, we can see that uh, as we go to a higher point F50, like 8 to 16, 64, or 1024.50, our acceleration factor keeps on increasing. Okay, by acceleration factor, we mean that the performance of FPGA performance or the PL or the hardware performance is much better than the software performance. So we can say that it's better to go for the hardware implementation of an FFT because it will give you much higher performance than if you could go to the software uh, implementation. Okay, and from this, we can see, we can say that, uh, uh, the, and the reason for this is uh, because of parallelism. So, uh, even though the PL part uh, works at a much lower uh, clock frequency than uh, the PS part, but still because it can exploit more parallelism, we can see that it uh, it uh, like the time for execution is much uh, lower than uh, the execution time for the PS. So this was the main idea behind this lab to show you that if we can uh, like uh, for the hardware implementation for those algorithms which can exploit parallelism, the hardware implementation can be much faster than the software implementation. And that's why we uh, use this FPGAs to accelerate our systems. So this was it about this lab. Uh, thank you very much.